Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. I have been introduced to an amazing co-writers is what they are and I don't want you to go anywhere because what they have done for so many years and what they are doing now is they have written a book and it is for women who have been incarcerated and their children because sometimes that conversation, well not sometimes, I can't even imagine the conversation and how you explain where'd mommy go well they help that in a book that they have co-written together and i've got them coming up which is candace pellucci and annette dominguez and then also i have a guy who is from a local vfw he and i are going to talk about the big holiday this weekend and it's memorial day so he's going to give us the reasons of what it is and what they're doing in that ceremony folks you're watching down home with tina and don't go anywhere because i'll be right back Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than 110 years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I've got two most wonderful ladies who, oh my goodness, it's just, it's one of those, I call it one of those times where when somebody is brought into your life you go oh my goodness perfect timing and I think that they have had perfect timing in most of the things they've probably done in their life because they have just recently what all that they've done and we're going to talk a little bit about that they have co-written a book together so they are co-authors of a book that it gives me just goosebumps even thinking about this how mommy found her way home and it's annette dominguez and candace pellucci who is with me today and it's the story about what led them into writing this book ladies oh my goodness you have got not just one story but i think so many amazing stories and changing the lives of people throughout your career and do you want to go first, Candace? <laughs> I'll let you yeah. share with how it all got started, and we'll talk a little bit later about the book. Okay. Um, well, I started at the uh, tapestry program at the Ohio Reformatory for Women in 91. I had the wonderful opportunity of being asked uh, to start the therapeutic community there, which was the first prison-based program in the state of Ohio. So they started it at ORW, which we know uh, over the years now is where our heart is uh, mm -hmm. working with women. And uh, a couple years after that, I had a wonderful opportunity of uh, Annette Dominguez joining the uh, group. And I think as we forged ahead, we were able to take that program and really make it what it needed to be along mm -hmm. with the modality, which is called therapeutic community, so the idea is that it's a 24-7 mm -hmm. changing of your social, your emotional, um, your thinking, and it's all day, 24-7. The women uh, and later men that were in the therapeutic community work hard every day to change their behavior and go home better, mm -hmm. be better parents, mm -hmm. be better community members, uh, be better in their schools and their churches and their neighborhoods. And so I think that's where it started, that commitment to working with women mm -hmm. and understanding that they had a voice and a voice that had not been heard um, for a long time. And so I think that that's one of the things that Annette and I really 
worked with them was reconnecting with their children, mm -hmm. reconnecting with their families. And um, I heard this quote last week where a woman was on a re-entry presentation a couple weeks ago, Annette and I were part of a panel, and she said, life doesn't stop at your first mistake. And I really think, yes, it doesn't. We have to keep coming back, and it's just an amazing, courageous journey that they do uh, to turn their lives around. And uh, so I think that that's, that's where it started. That mm -hmm. program has now been, uh, we were close to celebrating 30 years before the pandemic hit. Oh. And so that was at least the beginning of, of our connection, um, our mind, yeah. Why did you wanna do something like that? Why did you wanna work with women? Um, I have always, uh, my college experience was uh, criminal justice and corrections. Okay. I don't know how that came to be, but I always thought that I would end up uh, working, uh, originally I wanted to work with kids, mm -hmm. and I did have that opportunity. I worked at a, a juvenile court. I went out to Arkansas and started a program for uh, adjudicated young men, long-term and short-term on a 1,500-acre ranch. That was enlightening. Mm, nice. and. Uh, and, and so I, I, I had that wonderful opportunity. I worked in halfway houses and other uh, correctional kinds of experiences. And then um, just knew someone who uh, they wanted to, at, at uh, the agency, the nonprofit that we uh, ended up working for, where they wanted to start these programs. And okay. so I interviewed and, and then uh, actually, a funny thing is my husband said, do you, we should move out to Marysville because if you're gonna work there. And I said, oh, I'm only gonna stay for a couple years. <laughs> and I don't, want, I don't want to move the you know, children and stuff. And he said, okay. And so then 30 years later, <laughs> you know, I was still driving to all these locations. So Aww. it's um, a commitment, I think, of service and just believing in the population. And it's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And Annette, when did you begin to get involved with this? I came to Tapestry um, in 1993. Okay. And um, I think I just felt like I had found the place where I was supposed to be. Um, tapestry is about community. Um, our responsibility really, when you boil it down, was just to create a safe environment where the women felt as if they could, you know, lay down whatever mm -hmm. burden they had been dragging around, talk about the things that they'd never been able to talk about and process. A safe place, Ex comfortable place. Mm -hmm. They're filled yes. that they're wanted and valued. Yes, right. exactly. And where their voices mattered. Yes. Um, and where they could spend time with other women who had similar experiences. Yes. Not exactly the same, but similar enough that they felt a sense of connection. Mm -hmm. um, and that combination of safety um, and the connection to other individuals um, who were not only interested in listening, um, but wanted, needed to hear their stories so that they could feel comfortable to share their own. Um, and that's what I walked into. And um, <laughs> when I, not more than anything that I saw or heard, um, mm -hmm. but more about what I felt. Um, when I walked into that community. And I knew then that as long as um, I walked into that community and I felt that way, that's where I would be. Um, and then almost 28 years later, um, I still felt the same way every day when I walked into that community. Um, and so, um, and, and honestly, those women have taught me Aww. probably far more than I should ever receive credit for um, you know, having taught them and all the really important events in my life, I've experienced with that community, becoming a mother myself, becoming a wife, um, mm -hmm. becoming a grandmother. Um, you, know, you, you become a part of that family. Absolutely. And I think it's that sense of family, sense of community, sense of trust and safety uh, that promotes the kind of dramatic change that these women make in their lives and it's not easy and you know prison is not an easy place to be no. um, but they we um, were able to create what I always felt like was a sacred place inside the institution. And I loved what you said because you said listening to them 
and I would like to say is not only you listening and learning from them, but them giving the opportunity for somebody to listen. Right. It just goes both ways and it can help folks in huge ways. So I think that's for anybody and everybody mm -hmm. to hear just today. You've got a kid or a child and Absolutely. for yourself listening to them is just as important. It as, is. Yeah. It is. And, and so did you see the hope in the eyes of these women when you worked with them? Is that what kept you going and, and your drive for it? I think so. I think it was, um, it's kind of like planting uh -huh. a flower or planting a seed mm -hmm. and then if you are constantly tending to it checking on it um, sending others to check on it you mm -hmm. know that you can trust others to nurture that which is what they do in the community yeah. then that flower is going to grow yeah. um, and and it's going to bloom and that's really I think the experience the best analogy that I have for the experience that that um, you know I've enjoyed for all those many years, um, you know, the women would come in and they would entrust us with some of the deepest, darkest, most painful yeah. things um, that a human being can I endure. Even, I couldn't even imagine. Um, I couldn't imagine the stories that you've you've listened to to yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. you know, we all did it together, and I think that That's is it, yeah. the crux of the entire program: is that you don't have to walk this path alone. Yeah, um, right. You don't have to ever feel as if um, you're the only person. Correct, because you're never alone. Exactly. Yeah. And you're, uh, typically you're not the only person who've ever, who's ever experienced that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the thing that's really sort of sets them free, if mm -hmm. you will. Oh, yeah. When I hear my story in your story mm -hmm. and I don't feel alone. And that's I right. feel like I can talk about what I've experienced um, because now we share that mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really kind of the beauty of it and it's them mm -hmm. learning together on how to let go and let right. it be the past and not let it continue to burden them or keep right. them from growing right. and blossoming exactly the flower yeah. Yeah. yeah so you had a nonprofit and then the nonprofit is really what's led you to the co-writing of the book right we worked for a nonprofit you worked for a nonprofit right. okay yeah. okay through that experience. For the nonprofit yeah. okay yes. And then something happened during yes, COVID, like COVID. so much happened <laughs> during the pandemic. COVID. Yes, <laughs> happened. Yes, yes. yes. It, uh, yeah, we, um, like so many um, folks, uh, found out that we uh, didn't have a job, that um, <sighs> things had been terminated because of the pandemic and the ability to uh, keep people safe in the mm -hmm. institution because of COVID. So um, we found out um, rather quickly and abruptly and um, I think went through a process of grieving mm -hmm. a, um, a commitment that we had had for so long. Oh, yeah. So during the, the times that um, Annette and I, often we would lead groups together and participate with the women uh, on, in therapy groups, and we would talk about their children and look for books to be able to be relative for them to express um, how to tell their children where they're at, what that process looks like, to be able to parent mm -hmm. from an institution, which they can do. Yeah. Um, it's not obviously like being at home, but it's, it's definitely a, a great way to stay connected and to their children that they value and love so much. So Annette and I different times had tried to find books um, that had um, a view of a child uh, with a parent incarcerated. And we found, uh, now remember this is over 30 years, yeah. so we found a couple about dads, but not really anything about mothers and mm -hmm. uh, young children and in the voice of, uh, of a young child. So when I called Annette the day after she was driving and I knew she was gonna be upset as we all were, and we were chatting about, well, okay. And I said, <laughs> how about that book? Remember, we, we might have time now. And uh, let's, let's do something that allows us to channel um, you know, what we believe in and empower us and let's see what happens. And so you, she was like, okay, and uh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. And, wow. you know, so it, it kind of um, just went from there. And I think for both of us, but I, I know I can say that I think that it um, helped heal being yep. away, you know, from the population and, and, a, mm -hmm. and a life. I mean, as Annette said, us for them and them for us, you know, I mean, we really believed yeah. in that connective piece. And um, so that's 
I think, what yeah. we decided mm -hmm. to do. And um, it has been a journey uh, publishing. We self-published okay. and uh, had to pick um, an illustrator, and, um, which was Sheila Luther, and who thinks that she is not an artist, but is an amazing, <laughs> talented uh, returning citizen. And, uh, and I will say, especially uh, with Annette, she said that Lily, the little girl, looks, has Annette's hair, Aww. my smile, and her feet. <laughs> I yeah. love yeah. Oh, That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's so. funny. And how can the book, How Mommy Found Her Way Home, how can it be purchased? Um, you can purchase the book on our Seed in Hope website. Okay. Um, it's just seedinhope.com. And there is just a guide with everything that we have on there about things that we're doing in the community, projects and things that we have done, um, readings and things, and information um, for parents, for anyone um, who wants to know a little bit more about um, the impact of incarceration mm -hmm. um, on children and on families. And um, there's just a nice little easy guide. It's very user friendly and, okay. and they can find the book there. It's really about helping to speak to little ones and maybe adults to understand where mommy's gone mm -hmm. and, and that she's working on her way home. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. it. Yeah. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, anything else, ladies, that you would like to share? Um, I just think that, uh, you know, this has given us an opportunity to give voice to um, what we think is an, an underserved population, um, people don't tend to think about the, you know, the ancillary effects of, um, you know, a residential mm -hmm. parent being incarcerated and w what kind of an impact that has um, on that child. And so it's the biggest reason that we wrote it in the child's voice. And Lily mm -hmm. um, is really an amalgamation of every child that Candy and I mm -hmm. have ever seen wow. uh, going into or out of the institution. So it's, it's dedicated to the women of tapestry, but it's for Aww. moms and children everywhere. I love it. Yeah. And I would just like to say that, again, it's also uh, a tool to use with caregivers and foster mm -hmm. care and other uh, folks that are taking care of children, because one in 28 children have a parent that's incarcerated, and that equals out to 2.7 million. And uh, we want to break the stereotype mm -hmm. that women and men that go to prison um, don't deserve good things to happen to them because they do yeah. come into our communities and they love their children and they love their yes. families. So, And we just always got to have hope. Yes, absolutely. My favorite word, hope. Hope, <laughs> yes. Mine too. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, these co-writers of... How Mommy Found Her Way Home. Be looking for it, if you will. It's by Annette Dominguez and Candace Pellucci. I'll be back in just a minute. You're watching Down Home with Tina. Hi, I'm Amanda Wattenberg, Regional Director at Ohio Guidestone. Do you or does someone you know have a substance abuse disorder? Have you been thinking about getting help but don't know where to start? It takes a lot of courage to ask for help, but it's the most important step you can take. If you think you know everything that's available in Fairfield County, think again. Like other chronic diseases, addiction can be managed successfully. Treatment enables people to counteract addiction's powerful, disruptive effects on the brain's behavior and regain control of their lives. Even if it takes multiple attempts, treatment does work and people do recover from addiction every day. So keep trying because your life matters. You matter and we're here to help. Call 211 and ask for the treatment resources available right here in Fairfield County. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Hey, welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I've got Doug Kemp with me. He is from Chief Tarhi, VFW Post 1380 in Lancaster, and he is currently the quartermaster, going to change soon. But Doug, how many years have you been involved with VFW? Uh, 21. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. And what, what's it, what has it done for you, having the opportunity to be involved with a veteran organization? Uh, it allows me to continue serving the veterans mm -hmm. or cons serving the military, and yeah. uh, there's a lot of camaraderie that you know, I missed when I first got out of the service yeah. that I'm able to find there. 
Oh, I love that. I didn't even, you know, I, I was hoping that that's what you would say. And that's probably why you have just been involved for so many years. So, Doug, we are here to talk about a very important day coming up. And it is a day that is much bigger than maybe the big sales going on at the retail stores or a barbecue that some folks and, and getting their boat out and things like that. It's Memorial Day. And yes. I would like for you to please explain to those who maybe, I know they get it and they know it's bigger than just the sales, but they sometimes get it confused on what the meaning of Memorial Day really and truly is. Can you share that with us? Yes, uh, it started in 1868, basically. Uh, General uh, Logan, who was commander in chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, set aside, well, it was his General Order 11, and set aside May 30th, and it was first known as Decoration Day. And the purpose was to lay flowers and things at the graves of the uh, soldiers who had given their life and protection of their country in the, the Great Rebellion at that time. Mm -hmm. um, turn of the century, it became Memorial Day. And then actually in 1971, uh, federal law changed it to the last Monday of May. So we, we honor all veterans who have passed away. Mm -hmm. And this is a time that they do recommend that you go to their grave and lay flowers right. and recognize and giving them a moment of silence yes. for them. And with that being said, there may not be a Memorial Day parade going on. And this is going to take place where? There's going to be what? At 11 o'clock on uh, the last Monday uh, at Forest Row Cemetery, there will be a okay. memorial. They, okay. We do it there every year. Okay. Um, usually there is a parade that comes down Columbus Street into Forest Rose, but we're not having the parade, just okay. kicking off the memorial. Okay. And uh, what happens there is there's representatives from all the veterans organizations there, and they read the names of any of their members that have passed away in the past year. Okay. So it's like a memorial ceremony? Yes. Is what you're going to do? Okay. So for those folks who do not have an organization, that they were with a veteran organization and they have passed away in the last year, do they still get the opportunity to, of having their name announced and recognized? Yeah, if their family contacts one of the service organizations and uh, they're all in the phone, well, I don't know if there's phone books much anymore, but... Um, <laughs> Googleable. Yes. <laughs> you can Google the, There's two VFW posts in Lancaster, the American Legion and AMVETS. Okay. Those are the four big ones. And just let them know, you know, their father, grandfather, grandmother, okay. um, a World War II vet, their name, and uh, army, and they passed away this past, actually past two years okay. because we didn't have anything okay. last year at all. Okay. So, so just reach out, and then you, uh, one of you all will recognize yes. them on Memorial Day. Yep. So I think that's May 31st. I'm trying to do in my head the date. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe on so. On Monday, yeah. So it's the very last day of the month. And anything else that you would like to share with folks before we go, just to come out and recognize? Yeah, um, the, um, all the cemeteries, um, you should see new flags out at all the graves that we know are veterans. Um, if there's a family member who knows their, their loved one doesn't have a flag or a marker, they can go to the veteran service office here in town okay. and get those. and. Uh, the veterans organizations do that um, oh. every year right before Memorial Day. We put out new flags in all the cemeteries. Okay, Doug, do you happen to know the number to Chief uh, Tarhi VFW? Yes, 740-654-9183. Uh, okay. And the uh, other VFW is 740-653-1516. Thank you so much for your time and for coming in and explaining to folks a little bit about what Memorial Day is yes. really all about. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Folks, you're watching Down Home with Tina, and I'll be back in just a minute. Share with you some Memorial Day tips if you do want to go and remember those soldiers and veterans and also maybe want to have a little bit of a celebration that day. I'll be back in just a minute. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, 
and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided that's where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all the stuff. And we looked around, and I said, there's our bank, right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you, where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're a bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here. They're conversant. Customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Down Home with Tina is brought to you by those amazing sponsors that you just saw there and I want to thank you so much for watching but don't go anywhere yet because I want to share with you ways of having the perfect cookout. Okay so I'm not a grill master by any means at all so my first and foremost number one thing that you need to do is find a grill master. <laughs> Make sure you've got somebody to cook the meat on the grill for you <laughs> because that's not my thing. As a matter of fact I'm off doing many other things and I also do the behind the scenes stuff and this is what I wanted to share with you. So some of the things to have to do to have a perfect cookout is to make your guest list and contact those guests. Number two, don't be afraid to ask those guests, especially if you've got someone who makes something very delicious, to make something. My mom, for example, makes the best potato salad. And as a matter of fact, at the end of the cookout, we all have to argue who's gonna take what home. <laughs> so anyways, don't argue about that though. Just have it at your house and then mom will just leave their leftovers there. That's what I recommend. Also, you wanna make sure you write out your list of like supplies or items that you need, of course. Paper plates for some of those that use paper plates and plastic forks and the, of course, ingredients of what food you want to make. And don't forget to get, I didn't want to forget this, go to Bay Food Market and make sure you get your meats at Bay Foods because it is delicious cooking out on the grill kind of meat that they have there. And also, have fun. Have fun, you guys. You got to enjoy it while you can because life is just too daggone short. We want to make sure that you get the favorite people that you have around you. Okay. So I do have a PQ that I want to share with you before I go. The only things that we can take with us when we leave this world are the things that we have packed in our hearts. And those things that we have packed in our hearts happen to be the very same thing that I'm talking to you about, about getting together and sharing your days with you. And don't forget to also just have a moment of silence if you didn't get, or you're not going to get to make it out to the Memorial Day ceremony or something, just make sure you can take the time to call up your veteran. It's not Veterans Day, but just thanking them for what they've done. Maybe you can volunteer or get involved in a veterans organization yourself, or you can maybe go out to the cemetery and help those veterans organizations put the flags on the grave sites of our veterans. There's just many different ways that you can still honor those who have been in the military and gone on before us. And before I get out of here, I do want to make sure that you know the different ways of watching Down Home with Tina. You can watch it on my Facebook page, Down Home with Tina. Also, you can watch it on CLN, your um, hometown connection YouTube. And then also you can watch it on Spectrum, CLN 1021, and you can start watching that on Wednesday, so this Wednesday. I hope that you have a great one, have an awesome week, stay safe, and be careful out there on your Memorial Day weekend. God bless, and until we meet again, good day.